Hello everybody, welcome back to Guitar Street and today we are talking about an underrated piece of equipment and that is the foot switch. Right, so you press it, it's on, very sleek. I have been playing uh, live music and performing at weddings and events for about 5 years now. I've not seen anybody use a foot switch other than me. Maybe I'm the only picky one but I found that one of these things is very very helpful in the live setting. Why? Because when we are playing live music and we often have reverb right going into our voice and a little bit in the guitar and keyboard. But when you are talking in between songs, you don't want that reverb, right? It's actually very distracting to just be talking normally and then have it, oh, 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 you know, that's, I mean, that's delay, but reverb has kind of that, a little bit of a, like an echoey effect. So I've always found it to be very distracting, which is why I use a foot switch. And one of these things just basically, when you click on it, it turns the reverb on or off, right? And I've always used this FS, 5U, which works very, very well. Uh, I mean, when you click it, the reverb turns on. When you click it again, the reverb turns off. But I've always struggled with one thing, and that is this thing has no indicator that tells me whether it's on or off, right? I can only rely on my ears, which is difficult to do in a crowded and in a lively uh, setting. And uh, the way that I've just been navigating a, uh, around that is just to go around and look at the, the console and see if it's on or off. It's very, very distracting. With a traditional momentary foot switch, it works, right? When you press it, the reverb turns on and stays on. You press it again, it turns off. But you have no way of knowing just by looking at this, which is why it's so important to get feedback from this. Otherwise, you constantly have to peer at the console to see if this light is on or off. And it's a big pain in the ass for me. So I went to buy this second thing. So I thought, mm, okay, maybe I should get this Boss FS5L because this comes with a light, right? This is uh, what it looks like in the package. It has a uh, battery at the, I mean, battery compartment at the back. Because what this does is, is this this has a light, right? That tells you uh, if it's on or off, right? So you press it, it's on, press it, it's off. But what I found again is that many of the uh, the consoles, the uh, the Yamaha Stage Pass or the Yamaha MG20XU, for example, that I use, they don't work well with this. Here's how the reverb would work uh, in, in those. So for example, if your reverb was off, you press once, the reverb turns on. You press once again, the reverb stays on. So you have to press one more time for the reverb to turn off. But now the reverb is off and your light is on. And you press once again and the reverb is off again. And then you press once, it's on. So it's like, is it on or off? Like Reverb is currently off. If I turn it on, it's, it's still off. If I press it again, then it's on. If I press it again, nothing happens. I press it again, then it's off. So you can see why it becomes a nightmare because this light is off and it's on. But this light could be on and it could be on as well. So ah, this is basically useless. It's, it's not working because this is a latching one. And those consoles just work with momentary switches like this. So, you know, know this, right? Foot, foot, foot switches, there are this that are momentary. So, you know, it's on, off, on, off, and this is latching, right? You press it once, it's lat it latches and it turns on, uh, stays on. But for foot switches, this, uh, sorry, for some consoles, this does not work. And this only works, but this does work with some consoles. Uh, for example, the, the Mackie, right? I know the Mackie works with latching. So if you were to take this momentary switches, the reverb will only be on if you press on it and reverb is on or, or vice versa or it's off, right? For those, you need a latching one. So I'm like, ah, what the hell do I do with switches? So that's what this today's video is about. I need to buy a momentary switch with a LED that latches. So that's this one. And this is Bright Onion Pedals. This is not a sponsored video. I just decided to buy this pedal to solve a problem that has always been bugging me. 
So, and I feel that in live performance, you don't, you don't want distractions. You want everything to work as much as you can. So, let's unbox this together and see uh, whether this does the job. Okay, this is a Bright Onion Pedals. It's a custom-made pedal. Uh, let's open it. Okay, put it together. Okay, nothing much in there, just some styrofoam thing. Okay, more wrapping. More wrapping, this is like, okay. And guess what color I bought it in? It's pink. Because I, I lost a bet uh, with my with my buddy, my performing partner. And uh, I wanted blue, she wanted pink, she won. And now we have a pink pedal. So it looks like this, very clean. Oh, look, look at that. So we got it in pink with the white uh, lettering. So now, apparently, when you when you press this, the light should stay on, but it's a momentary switch. Okay, uh, it needs nine volt or mono. It should have a battery compartment. I wonder why it does not. Ah uh, man, I hope this is working. But it should have a battery compartment. So, I hope they didn't send me wrong. Uh, let's pause the video and come back in a bit. Okay, moment of truth. So this does not have a battery compartment, but it does have four screws inside. If you're telling me I have to open up the screws to change the battery, I will be very mad because this is the worst thing ever. And I'm hoping it's not like this. I'm really hoping it's not like this. Because you see, when I'm screwing it open, the paint kind of falls off as well. Please don't, please tell me that's not the case. Okay, and it is the case. You have to take out that thing to put in a new battery. I'm like, come on, this is the most silly thing ever. But you know what? Let's uh, take a battery and put it in. I'm going to take a new one because there's no way I'm going to open it up in the middle of a gig. New GP battery. This is, come on, you gotta design it so that the battery compartment is outside and easily accessible as if anything that is battery powered. Bright Onion, come on, if you're watching this video, you need to do better than this. This is pretty bad. Okay, now I think it's like this. Negative, okay, positive, here we go. It's also not easy to put it in. A few moments later. Okay, the way that we will know if it's on or off is to plug this in. Okay, so now, there we go. Okay, it works. So this should be momentary, but the latching, the LED is latching. Okay, so no, now we know it works, but this is a bad design. I'm going to screw this on. I'm going to try it and see if it works and I'll, I'll report back. So if we press it on, it's on, right? The reverb is on, light is on, tells me it's on. And it's off right now. So yeah, for, for this it works. And I'm very happy with this purchase. Except the silly battery door. Put a battery door here, not in there. Alright, so that was the Bright Onion pedal. I think the pedal looked pretty good. Very simple and very sleek. Uh, and they gave also these uh, four rubber feet let me cover my face four rubber feet that you could stick it on I'm gonna stick it on here right not on the uh, screw because I have to access the screw right now every time to have this on or off but uh, yeah I'll just try to put this on and hopefully the feet work as well because it's kind of slippery this way okay so that's my review of the bright onion pedal and why you need a foot switch for your live performance Thank you for watching Guitar Street and I'll see you in the next video.